everyone, welcome back to the channel. All right, so, by the way, have you subscribed yet? You should consider it. We talk about MTG Finance, things like that, do some openings occasionally. This is two days in a row, but uh, I was thinking about this. Single cards in Crimson Vow are subtly ticking up. All the land bases, Toxril, um, that Colossus, I mean, there's a few Planeswalkers that are good, Sorin, there's, I don't think Chandra's that great, but there, there's a bunch of good cards in this set, and I'm wondering, in 2024, could it be, I don't know about profitable, but could it be at least enjoyable to open a box of Crimson Vow, um, and we are going to find out today. I picked this box out of my collection because it has this little, this little thing here. This little nub, the box, I don't I don't even know what to call it, but I thought it was interesting, and here we go. So we'll, oh, there we are. All right, I have not opened a collector box in probably a few months at this point, honestly. So I'm excited to get in and, and crack some packs and, yeah, and talk about this set. And <clears throat> I don't know, I, I feel like it's starting to, to move up, start to see prices. I mean, I think I got this for maybe like, 105 something like that and now you're seeing them up for like i don't know like two uh sorry not two um well like 130 oh so i didn't know i actually did not know this comes with box stoppers we'll probably do one to start and uh and uh yeah i don't know we'll uh we'll do the other at the end how about that <laughs> all right so box topper number one i actually forgot what's even in these, to be perfectly honest with you. So, all right, it's behind. So, is it anything decent? And is it foil? Ooh, wow, okay. Yeah, that is uh, that is pretty decent. Okay, okay, so we got a Count Dracula, Sword in the Mirthless, in the uh, Borderless Foil. Nice, that's a pretty decent start. If I'm not mistaken, that is, um, I'll keep that up as one of the Mythics. That is some, somewhere around like a $12 card. So not a bad start, especially for a box topper. So yeah, the land base of this set, it's doing well. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of just standard rares moving up. Um, I know, I'll know them as I see them. Um, there's like classic commander cards in here, like, oh my goodness, I cannot open these packs. Um, like uh, the hull break horror, things like that. There we go, finally. Um, there's even some tokens that are pretty expensive. Uh, from what I hear, oof. Yeah, I see some quality issues down there. See the see the scratching? Ugh, hate to see that. Oh, forgive me. All right, so start with the foil commons, which, geez, why why do foil commons and uncommons need to be like this in, uh, in these sets? I really, I'm really not about it. All right, so love these. So, okay, so we start off immediately with, with a storm carved coast. So, uh, not bad there. This is obviously the lower end of all that, but you know these lands are going from anywhere from like eight to seventeen dollars, depending on your rarity. Um, another mythic, Timothar, Baron of Bats. Yeah. Okay. Then we get some. I guess I'll throw that with the rares. Then we get some treatments. Uh, Edgar, Charmed Groom. Okay. Nice. Put that with the rares as well. And then we finish off on an Alchemist Gambit. So nothing too special there. Ooh, sorry, knocked over my coffee. Oh, I don't know. Put these there, whatever. So many piles, so many piles to, to maintain. But yeah, let me um, let me know if you were playing Magic around this time and uh, and what your attitude towards this set was. I, I think it's still honestly being looked at pretty negatively just because of all the drama with the Amazon dumps, everything like that. I think we actually have that. Uh, I think this. I think this token is actually five bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so there we go. We get these commons out of the way that nobody cares about. So why are they even there in collector's boxes? Cool. Uh, right on. Yeah, these lands are awesome. I wish they... Oh, and there goes Biggie. I wish they, you know, did something to, I don't know, make them interesting or maybe take away full arts. But Curse of Hospitality. It's an R curse. Not bad. All right. Hellhenge Overlord, followed by a Hallbreak Horror. So this is one of the ones that are also moving up. Um, I think this is somewhere around the seven to eight dollar range. So not bad there. All right, then we get some treatments, followed by a Curse of Conf a Circle of Confinement. Hmm. That's nice with the borderless uh, alternate art treatment. Not bad. Um, put that there. 
of uh, Halana and Elena partners. Okay. All right. Then we get uh, some. Oh, and then we get a storm, car storm carved coast in the uh, borderless foil. So yeah, I mean, not a bad start by any means. Not super heavy on uh, on mythics or anything like that. But we already got two great lands. Um, you know, on top of a couple decent rares. Um, if the myth mythics come through, I think we'll be in good shape. But, uh, but yeah, I appreciate anybody stopping by and, uh, and stopping for, you know, our discussion videos. I really enjoy doing them, so that's going to be a majority of what's going to be on this channel. But hoping, you know, at some point down the road we'll, you know, maybe be in some sort of position to do some box openings and everything like that. But that's way down the road. Nothing, uh, yeah, so we have, okay, yeah, let's get the comments out of the way. Uh, Hero's Downfall, downgraded, not bad at all. All right. Get a couple uncommons there. Get the mountain. Then we have a Catilda Darnheart, uh, Donhart Martyr, followed by a Sinister Waltz. Nothing crazy there. Uh, St ooh, Stencia Uprising. Okay, interesting. Put those with the rares. Then we have our Blood Tithe Harvester. Not a bad uncommon by any means. Followed by a Thirst for Discovery in the alternate art. Okay. Blood a uh, Blood Veil Purveyor. Uh, that's another rare, Valderan Epicure, and then we have a Hall Pack Piper. Not the greatest there, but it is what it is. Yeah, Blood and, blood and Zombie Token. That's a sweet zombie token, actually. <laughs> Alright, almost quarter through this box. I'd say, honestly, not a bad start at all. I'd say we probably have somewhere close to, I don't know, like 40-ish dollars in value, so... $40 dollars halfway through, or a quarter of the way through. Not too bad. Um, there we go. Evolving Wild, okay. Blah, 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 great. Get the Uncommons out of the way, too. Yeah, might as well just put those there. Oh, okay. Awesome, awesome basic land. All right. Creepy Puppeteer. Very creepy indeed. <laughs> Cyan of Opulence, very cool. Glorious Sunrise. Put those in the rares. And we get our Treatments. Okay, then we have a legendary creature, uh, Eleth Tormented Prophet. Nice, very, very nice hand-drawn art there. Very cool. Circle of Confinement and an Overcharged Amalgam. All right, so these this last slot is not uh, not hitting super well, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, you know what? Let's hop in. Second box topper. Let's go. All right. Oh, jeez. Come on, can it be as good as the first one? And there we are. Nope, Vampire's Vengeance. Not bad, but uh, but definitely the Soren was way, 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 way better. Okay. All right, so I'll be happy for the Soren. <laughs> um, let's see here. Ugh. Yeah, so it's also very interesting to see this. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it a bit on the channel, but all of these upticks and and modern magic but not what's uh you know not like current sets so like 2021 22 era um sets just subtly upticking you know um obviously my favorite infinity is starting to do very well um yeah i mean even sets like crimson vow new capenna they're subtly starting to move up Ooh, very nice love that art that is very, very creepy. Very cool, though. Nice. All right. Oh, then we get our third mythic of the box. All right. Henrika Dumrathi. Or, oh, Dumnathi, rather. Forgive me. Flying at the beginning of combat. Choose one that hasn't been chosen. Sacrifice a creature. Each player sacrifices a creature. You draw a card and lose one life. Or transform and you Ooh. Very, very nice. Okay. Very cool. All right. So, sorry. A little bit of a longer video. Today, um, I'm not uh, as fast as some on YouTube at, at opening packs, but I'm sure I'll get much better at, as it, at it as time goes on. Um, but yeah, ooh, come on. Yeah, I, the collector pack, I don't know why they need to be so thick and like tough to open, but it is what it is. I'm probably missing a pull tip. No, I don't think they do. Sweet Plains, nice. Headless Rider, Sudden Salvation, Dollhouse of Horrors, okay those there oh very nice 
All right, then we have a Voldaren broadcast, a bloodcaster rather, followed by a gluttonous spirit, and ooh, very nice. And we have a Dahlia, guardian of Thraben, in the alternate art. Very beautiful. That is probably my fav favorite. Uh, yeah, my favorite art we've seen so far. That's really, really nice. Really nice. Very happy to have that one. Oh my gosh, I almost want to put that up there. It's so nice. Okay, nice. Said nice like 87 times in a row. All right. Yeah, man. on. Jeez. Jeez, these packs, man. All right. So, kind of stalling out on some of the heavy hitters. Obviously, the Thalia is not too bad. Nice mountain. Aha! You complain, you gain, folks. Hall break horror. Very nice. But we still haven't seen um, wedding announcement. We still haven't seen some pretty heavy hitters that we kind of need to... Uh, to do well in these boxes. Oh, nice. Okay, we have a Chandra dress to kill. Very cool. And the borderless non-foil. Um, put that with the mythics up there. And then we have dying to serve. <laughs> Whenever you discard one or more cards, create a tapped 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. Okay, and it only triggers once a turn. That's probably why it's not that great. Alrighty. I would even just, uh, oh, really like that treasure, actually. Hmm. Um, I mean, even like these, these collector boxes don't seem as extreme as the ones we have now. Maybe I'm just not noticing. I mean, I know there's like commander subsets and things like that, like this haunted library, but, um, but even this doesn't seem nearly as crazy as, uh, as boxes have gotten in the past, you know, year. <laughs> so, um, I would love, I would love, love, love if wizards took a little bit of a step back, um, yeah, I'll save that to this point in the video because I know only only people that are uh, that are interested in watching my content all the way through are here. So hello to you. Thalia, again, just in the standard. Very nice. All right, Olivia's Wrath, Mirror Hall Mimic. Okay. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. Cool alt, alt art. Dracula, Blood Immortal. Very nice. Put that there. I'll put that here, and oh, there we go. That is what we were looking for, the Cultivator Colossus in the Borderless Foil. Now that one is probably a good $15, $20 rare right there, or Mythic, rather. Very, very nice card. Very happy to see that. Um, usually, I don't know, usually Planeswalker tokens do decently, even, even still, right? I mean, still don't run into them too often. Wow, the easiest pack to open so far. Love to see that. All right. All right, get through this nonsense. All righty. Then we have Investigator's Journal, Camber the Plunderer, Graf Reaver, okay. Followed by our treatments. All right, and here we go. Olivia, Crimson Bride. For the borderless non-foil mythic, Wedded Secretary, and Angie, Maid of Dishonor for the uh, foil showcase. Very nice card. Very nice. I think that's the first showcase we've actually seen. All right? Yeah, in the last slot. Very cool. All right, final three packs here. I think, honestly, I think we did pretty well for ourselves here. I wouldn't say it's like a home run by any stretch of the imagination, but I think these, these boxes feel a lot better to open at the current state. So, all in all, that's a good sign for me. Um... Very good. Let's see here. Oh, Cemetery Desecrator. I know that one was used in the... I don't even know if this deck's used anymore. Was it the... Oh, shoot. Um, It was like sort of like a quasi-cascade deck that was used like a few months back, if you all remember. But uh, that wasn't a bad card at one point. Don't know what it is now. All right. Edgar Groom Champion, followed by a... Oh, oh do we have something else in the back? Uh, we do. Aha! <laughs> Followed by a Shattered Sanctum in the close. Very, very nice in the borderless foil. That is the most expensive land in the set. Very good. Alrighty. Yeah, so last two packs here. All in all, I'm very happy with this opening. I thought this was uh I thought this was fun to crack. I've always liked the Innistrad set since, you know, um even I started playing. I didn't when I first came into Magic, I didn't come in during Innistrad, but it was it was around. Um, 
still, so I definitely played some drafts and I thought it was a lot of fun. So we're in the Mirthless. I almost thought that was dust. I actually haven't seen the <laughs> regular foil uh, for another mythic. Jeez. Um, Wolven Wild Oddity. I thought that was a decent card, but I don't think it is at the moment. Wow, this is the Thalia box, huh? Jeez, and the black and white showcase. I don't even know what they call it, but very cool nonetheless. Put that there. Blood Petal Celebrant, followed by a, ooh, Dorothea Vengeful Victim. Not the not the home run, but very, very nice in the black and white uh, showcase there. Very cool. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing too crazy on the token. All right, and last pack. Once again, if you guys uh, are still here, thank you very much for, for joining. I really appreciate all the support and uh, just hit 130 subscribers. I think we're at 131 at the moment. So uh, thank you all. I really do appreciate all the support. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to make more videos for everybody and and uh, yeah, and see where the channel goes, I guess. Uvenwald Oddity, nothing crazy there. Come on, save it for the end. Oh, we haven't seen that one yet. Innocent Traveler. Oh, here's the, that was the Dothria or whatever her name. There we go. Uh, put that there. And last card is a Hollowed Haunting. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, well I, I, think, I think I could say fairly comfortably that this was indeed a home run box. Uh, two Sorens. Um, Thalia's out the ass. Cultivator Colossus in the Borderless Foil. Um, Hollowed Haunting Borderless Foil. I think that's the most expensive mythic in the set. Um, we had two... We had the Shattered Sanctum. We had the Stormcarved Coast. And I think we even had a couple here. Our first our first rare in the set was uh, was that Stormcarved Coast. Do we have any others? More Thalia's. Uh, let's see here. I don't think we did. I think in terms of like the lands, it was a pretty eh, sort of, yeah, no, I'm not seeing anything. Nope. Nope. Nothing there. All right. But hey, all in all, not a bad box. Tons of mythics, um, three lands, two in the best possible uh, setting. So yeah, I think it was a fairly good opening. I appreciate everybody for dropping by. Once again, thank you all for 130 subscribers. And um, yeah, I'm excited to keep making content for you. Uh, leave a comment, like, dislike, doesn't matter to me and, and uh, any engagement helps. I hope you all have a great day and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend.